This is going to be weirder than usual. Can't be helped. There's a certain beauty to minimalism. It's always appealed to me. Maybe that's why I found this game so pleasing. Just the satisfaction that Remedy put every little thing where it needed to be. The introduction to Control is no different. It aims to temper you for the weird and the unknown. Only after playing through the game entirely did I realize just how beautiful and insightful the opening moments are. You're introduced to this concrete high rise off of a busy city street. The opening dialogue begins. A woman speaks about a room with a poster in it. How everyone thinks that the room and the poster are the entire world, but the world is much bigger, much stranger. Behind the poster is the truth, a hole to the real world. People feel so safe in their rooms until something crawls out from behind the poster. Then people spend their whole lives trying to forget what they saw. As this monologue occurs, you're shown the front lobby of this building. Federal Bureau of Control is mounted above the front desk. A portrait of a man, Director Zachariah Trench, becomes the focus. This is accompanied by a quick cut to Director Trench sitting at his desk looking unsettled. Quick glimpses of a black pyramid and a bald man surrounded by red are flashed on the screen, followed by another view at Trench as he places a gun to his head. Fading back to the lobby, a new portrait is the focus, a man with his back turned to the viewer, titled not with his name but with a plaque that reads Our Bureau at Work. This man is shown after still with his back turned, mopping the floors with yellow headphones in his ears. Ending the dialogue, our protagonist, Jesse, enters the lobby, announcing, I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Who she's talking to remains unknown. At this point, you wander around the lobby. It's vacant. Signs that something terrible has happened are everywhere. Coffee mugs and cigarettes are left about. The building is in lockdown apparently, even though you just walk through the front door untroubled. You make your way upstairs. You spot the portraits in the hallway. There is one that wasn't shown in the cinematic. The head of research, Dr. Casper Darling, standing in his white lab coat, followed by the portrait of the man mopping, and at the end of the hallway, Director Trench. The next turn is down a dark hallway. You pass some dimly lit offices and a few wet floor signs before you hear someone singing over some faint music. A few Hello. more hallway turns reveals that it's the man mopping. He introduces himself as Ati, the janitor, and he assures you that you were there for the position of the janitor's assistant. He points you down the hall to the elevator to get to your interview. As you part ways, he says a few Finnish idioms that essentially boil down to, if they don't hire you, then they totally fucked up. Someone should be executed. Jesse, maybe not understanding what Ati said, continues on, thinking to herself, Ati is just some night shift loner, but at least he has a friendly face. To which Ati says aloud, better than someone with no face at all. Think about it. No face. Jesse does not acknowledge this mind reading. Continuing straight ahead to the elevator, you notice something eerie. This is the hallway from the lobby. The portraits of Trench and Darling still hang on the wall, but replacing the one of Ati in the middle is the elevator. You start to think, well, maybe it's a different hall. There's no way I could have come out the same way that I went in. You look down over the rail. It's the front lobby you walked into not 10 minutes ago. Still not quite convinced, you head back to where the janitor was to retrace your steps. You pass Ati. You pass the same dimly lit offices, and it's a dead end. Where you came from no longer exists. Giving up on understanding, you head to the elevator and press the button. As the door shut, Jesse says, The cell and the poster. And the opening credits play.
It ends with a large, bold, tight face seen throughout the game as introductions to each area. It simply reads the title of the game before the elevator door is open. That is the introduction to this wonderful masterpiece of a game. More information than you can interpret on a first playthrough, but just enough to let you know how wild of a ride this game actually is. You never quite get the chance to catch your breath in this game. Just in the next 5 minutes after getting off the elevator, you walk into Director Trench's office as he shoots himself in the head. You pick up the gun he shot himself with, you're contacted by the Black Pyramid, you're teleported to an astral plane and told to shoot these ashen monsters with this gun, proving to the Pyramid that you're able to carry yourself. You are now the director of the Federal Bureau of Control, and the last guy, Trench, the one who shot himself in the head, he starts speaking to you about being the director. You exit his office and bam, everything is dark except a venomous red glow at the end of the hall, three bodies just floating in the air enticing you to step forward. And you do. The red light seems to try to infiltrate your mind as you desperately try to fight it off, using the mysterious being that is the focus of your conversation all along. You snap back into it, the floating bodies drop down and they start shooting at you. You take them out and continue on. The only way forward is again the way that you came from. But again, its destination is different from where you began. You see, the thing about control is, you're never in control. Jessie is placed where the board wants her to be. You just keep moving forward. I love my time with this game, not just the absolute beauty of its introduction, but the whole package. The aesthetic design attributes to the weird and the unknown. Dramatic lighting such as the harsh red glow is injected throughout the game and it adds contrast to the otherwise monotonous, brutalist architecture. These large detailed areas are meant to be busy, filled with people at work but they are laid bare. Only the floating bodies remain. The hiss die and they explode into rainbow spectrums, beauty and death. Red, which reality is real? Who has control? You can almost hear our words, but you forget. This happens more and more now. You gave us permission in your regulations. We wait in the stains. The word that describes this is redacted. Repeat the word, the name of the sound. It resonates in your house. After the song, time for applause. Everybody let me hear you say